definitely seems like that's something we're leading to, a big a big split in the group where people start following Shane and other people start following Rick. Uh, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't want to discount that theory, uh, but I will say that you know those two men are definitely headed for some big conflict. I mean, uh, aside from the leadership role that they have to deal with, and you know the fact that they both have conflicting ideas for you know what is best for this group, they also have you know the small matter of Lori to fight over, and the fact that she's pregnant, and both men believe that she's pregnant with their baby. I mean, that's uh, you know that's a bit of a powder keg that's uh, you know simmering uh, in the back. Uh, you know, waiting to blow up and, uh, you know, it, it, it'll probably blow up in, in, in the next uh, episode or so. If you read the comic book, uh, and you should read the comic book because it's cool, right? Uh, they didn't stay on the farm for very long in the comic. And uh, uh, while we do diverge uh, from time to time from what was done in the comic, uh, I don't think that we would ever diverge to the point where they would stay on the farm forever. So uh, uh, yes, they'll definitely be off the farm uh, at some point soon. The only people that want to see the governor and Michonne in the show more than the fans are the people working on the show. So uh, I think they can definitely expect to see them at some point in the future. Uh, you know, whether that's this season or next season or the season after that uh, remains to be seen. But, you know, I think that we want to keep that to be a bit of a surprise. Uh, one of my favorite things about the episode that just aired this week is that when Michael Raymond James is being manipulative and is appearing so threatening, but is also appearing, you know, like he's trying to appear kind. And uh, I think that he very much has a governor vibe. And I like the idea that a lot of comic fans were watching that episode going, okay, that guy's the governor. He's a cool governor. Yeah, I can see this. He and Rick are gonna be at odds for a while. This is awesome. Oh, he was just shot in the head, you know? Uh, and I like that, that playing with people's expectations. And I would wanna maintain that. So I can't really reveal when those guys will show up other than we would definitely want it to happen. I think that the divergences are necessary in order to make the show appealing for someone who is uniquely familiar with the comic book. I think that, uh, you know, for the average fan of the show who may not have read the comic, I think that, you know, it's an interesting, compelling story and we use a lot from the comic and, uh, you know, it feels like a, a good adaptation to me. But uh, one of my main concerns, you know, as a writer in the writer's room and an executive producer on the show is that we maintain that air of uncertainty. Uh, you know, I love that when you sit down to read an issue of The Walking Dead, you have no idea what's going to happen. You don't know that people are going to live or if they're going to die or, or what's going to happen. Anybody could get eaten at any time. And uh, I would hate to lose that for people that, you know, read the comic and watch the show. I, I, I think, uh, you know, it would be boring for them to be like, oh yeah, and then, you know, Dale goes, there we go, you know. Right. Uh, uh, but uh, they'll, they'll, they'll be getting to the prison uh, now, you know, that's, that's not any fun. And so in order to maintain that, you know, we are going to be adjusting things. And I think things like Shane living and Sophia dying and the way that they lead to different stories. I mean, a perfect example of that is the fact that Shane killed Otis. I like to think that if Shane had lived in the comic like he is in the show, you know, Otis would have been shot as well and, you know, he wouldn't have been in the comic as long as he was. And so I think it's cool to look at it like a, a bit of an alternate reality, like what would happen if Shane had survived. Uh, but also, I mean, you know, we are going to be adapting some scenes directly from, you know, how they were in the comic, but we're going to be arriving upon those scenes in different ways to keep it interesting. I think a really good example of that is Carl getting shot in the premiere episode of the second season. The way that that happened was exactly the way it happened in the comic. You know, uh, Rick was in the woods, he had Tyrese with him instead of Shane, but whatever. And, you know, he got shot, it was Otis, and they went to Herschel's farm to receive medical attention because that was nearby. Uh, but the way we led up to that event was so different that when Carl was shot, you know, fans of the comic were still like, whoa! I mean, even I, you know, jump when that happens, like almost every time. I always try to stop myself, don't jump, don't jump, and then I do. But, uh, you know, I think that's really the best of both worlds. So we'll probably be continuing down that track.